We have been talking about uh, seasons, and I want to continue along that uh, vein, and, and I encourage you to take notes this morning. Uh, Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, in the first verse, we see uh, the scripture that's become familiar to us in the last few weeks, and that scripture is, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. I want to say that again. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. The Bible, as we've been talking about the last few weeks, the Bible constantly talks about times and seasons. And we see seed time and harvest throughout the scriptures. And uh, we could say, well, that's just, oh, it's just beautiful flowery language. Or we can recognize that if you really look at it in the scriptures, there are principles that God sets forth that have to do with the seasons. And if we will learn those principles, we'll understand how to act and react through life in a way in which we'll be favored and blessed. And I want you to see that it's possible to do that. Now, uh, we talked about the fact that you can be in one season in your family and another season in your finances, one season in your studies, and another season in your relationships. And so each of these principles, as to each one of the seasons, can speak to what you should do when you find yourself in that season of life in any given aspect of your life. We talked about the fact that winter will always turn into spring, and spring will always turn into summer, and summer will always turn into fall, and it will go through that cyclical process. So we learn from that what to do when we're in a winter time of life, or a spring time of life, or a summer time of life. To give just a little bit of review, especially for those of you that are brand new this morning, and welcome to Capital Life Church. It's great to have you here. It's a delight to have you. Breathe in deep. Enjoy this. You're surrounded by people that love you. Next week's going to be great at the lake. Can you say amen? amen. And, um, and I'm looking forward to it. The last time we were at Burke Lake, uh, it was one of the moments that just stands out in Capital Life Church history. We had a blast. And that's how you get to know one another. So church isn't about just coming and sitting down and singing and listening and leaving. Church is about relationship. Can you say amen? amen. It's about relationship. It's about getting uh, through life together in a way that is triumphant and wonderful and blessed. And even during the difficult times, you know people are standing with you and praying for you and loving on you. So to give you a little bit uh, of a background, winter. Winter is a time when the cold wind blows through. And we talked about this a, a few weeks ago. And, and uh, there's a blanket of snow that covers everything. And this season, if it really can be applicable to us, the way I would describe it is that it's a season when you feel like you've been placed on hold. Have you ever felt like that? You've been placed on hold? And you've got dreams and aspirations, but here you are feeling like it's all hidden, it's all buried, it's all on hold. But one of the things about the winter season that we talked about that I think is so powerful is that if you find yourself feeling like your dreams are covered up, if you're wondering, and we talked about this with trees during the winter, you can't even tell sometimes whether they're dead or alive during the winter season. If you're wondering whether certain things are dead or alive and you're in a winter season, I want you to know that that's a time when it's all about the foundation of the tree. It's all about the root system, the foundation. The sap goes down into the, the trunk of the tree, and growth takes place in the roots of the, of the tree. So the, so the roots are growing and going deeper. We may think that a winter time is just simply being put on hold and we don't know what's happening and God is far away and we see others that are leaping forward in life and we are in this on hold season. But if we recognize what it's all about, we'll realize that it's all about character issues. It's all about coming back to your foundation. It's all about coming back to a sense that God is alive and real in your life and you're renewing and refreshing a sense of worship and you're getting a sense that you can have an intimate relationship with God and you can communicate with God. Don't just pray to God. Listen as well. Let him guide your footsteps. Let him guide your actions. Let him do what David prayed for, that the works of David's hands would be established. And King David prayed for that, and King David was able to see that during his lifetime. So we see that in the wintertime. Then we talked about the spring season. Spring is a time of planting seed. And some of you are in a spring season. It might be in, in regard to relationships. Wouldn't that be wonderful if you're planting seed right now for relationships? 
and, uh, and it may be in regard to your family or whatever else. But I want you to know that you, some of you are anointed right now to plant seed in a certain season that you're in called spring. And so spring is a time of planting. The person who refuses to plant in March and April will have no harvest when it comes time for the harvest season. So don't hold on to the seed. We talked about the fact that, a, that seed that's in the hand or kept in the package and never opened up cannot give you a harvest. And a lot of people are keeping the seeds in their pockets. They're keeping the seeds, uh, symbolically speaking, in their hands. And they're not putting them in the soil and asking God to bless what God has given them and now they've planted. Remember that God is the one who provides the seed. The Bible says that he is the provider of the seed. So when you think, but I don't have the seed that I see others having. I don't have that money. I don't have that talent. I don't have whatever it may be. God wants you to know that he gives you exactly what he expects you to plant. You don't have to say, I don't have it. Somehow I'm lost in the loop. Instead, you can know that God is the provider of seed. But when he gives the seed, when he gives you love, when he gives you talent, when he gives you the ability to have something that you can plant in the ground, it's that time that you say, God, to your glory, I take this seed and I plant it now in good soil, believing for you to raise up a harvest. It's very important during the springtime that you understand that you only plant what you want to harvest. Only plant what you want to harvest. Because when the harvest time comes, Many things can be harvested. It's not all good. And it's wonderful to consider the good and the tremendous blessings that can be harvested at harvest time. But for some people, they don't look forward to the harvest because their seed has been such that it isn't good seed. We need to be able to nourish the seed. We need to be able to know that when we plant the seed, that there will be a harvest of that seed. Now, I saw this statistic years ago, and I, I don't know what the current stat would be on this. This is a few years old, this, this statistic. But I would imagine it'd be relatively the same. And this is the, the uh, concept. They took a, uh, whoever they are, took a survey in the prison systems and correctional facilities and found out that 70% of those in correctional facilities, I repeat myself, 70% of those in correctional facilities did not know their biological father growing up. Now that tells me something, and it's a very practical uh, illustration to say that seed was planted that, that uh, individuals never intended to nourish, never intended to have a harvest. When you plant seed in the ground, when you're in that season where it's anointed to put the seed in, knowing that you'll have a harvest down the road, Make certain that what you place in your garden is exactly what you want to harvest. And if it's not, don't plant it. Amen?